<laughs> made a safety hazard for myself. So, hey everyone, um, I'm James. I'm a software software developer, really, um, and I'm going to talk about iOS iOS 10 today. Give you a swift introduction to it. It's a very funny Apple joke. Um, so today. I'm not going to go too much into the details of the code behind things because we'll be here forever. But I will go through um, just the main features, like uh, SiriKit was one of the changes made in iOS 10. It's open to third party developers now. Um, we're going to go through maps, messaging apps, and um, there's new animations API, a few other new APIs. Um, I'm not sure how many of you here are iOS developers, actually. but there's some easy money to be made here, I'm telling you. Wait until you get to the sticker packs. It's the most ridiculous thing ever, but wow. Um, I'll, I'll explain. So that'll keep you here until the middle of it. Um, so we'll go straight on to, on to SiriKit. So um, like I was saying, that's one of the big announcements that was made in um, WWDC this year. And it's something that, you know, like with all Apple things, it was rumored for ages that it'd be opened up. And, and now it has. Um, so, you know, there's an example screen of how it would look with Lyft. We'll go back to that in a second, because, um, you know, ride sharing is, is awesome. So, for SiriKit, there's a bit of a limitation. Um, so, this is Apple, so you're used to limitations here. And there's only um, eight domains that are allowed to use SiriKit. So, um, if you have a, a messaging app or a payments app, photo app or a ride booking app, then you can have Siri invoke your app. If you have a productivity app or something else, you're just out of luck. So that's the way it always has been with Apple. I'm sure they'll open things up later. Um, but actually, you'll see later why they mightn't. In the, in the examples, that they, so up until now, any example we've seen of Siri, it seemed a little, a little magical, but it's because it calls Apple native apps, it's not really magic. Apple can hardwire everything in the background. But the cool thing here is in the WWC, in the WWDC keynote, um, when they were showing the example of WeChat, a chat application, they were able to, you know, any number of phrases could get you to get Siri, sorry, to, um, to text a message. So it's just different variations around language. So you don't have to be too strict like you might be with some speech recognition things. So, so it's, it's cool that it does that much. And you know, the key word here is always WeChat, the name of the app. But there is, there is a lot more work that you need to do. I'm just going to talk a little bit about that. But first, if you are using SiriKit, SiriKit is um, implemented in, uh, in your Xcode project as an extension. So you create your, your app as you normally would, and then you add, um, I'll talk about that soon, new, new extensions. And uh, so they've had extensions since iOS 8, I think, when they had today extensions that would show up on your, on your home screen. Um, the thing about it is that you're kind of splitting your, your project up, your app is You've got your main part of your app, and then you've got your Siri kit part of your app, um, or your messages part of your app. And when you're doing extensions like that, you should use embedded frameworks. And embedded frameworks are iOS's way, I suppose, of doing something like microservices, where you've got your shared code stuck in like this little bundle. You should have your data model in there, most of your networking code, your user interface that's shared between things, and any decision-making logic. The great thing about this is it makes um, unit testing your code so much easier. So if, if you're using Xcode, um, the, actually, there's a pile of new extensions in Xcode now. Um, and when you're dealing with Siri Kit, you want to create a new, a new target. So you go file new, file new target, and then you pick intense extension. And what that will do, sorry, all my slides will move now, maybe. Yeah, what that'll do is create two things. So you've got your intense extension with an intent handler. I'm sure you can't read this. I should have zoomed it. And you've got your extension UI, which has a storyboard, which is this thing here, and a view controller. So 
if you're familiar with iOS development, any time that you create an app and you're, you're building user interfaces, you've got, you, you use the storyboard for this. And if you've got little, a little section in, your, in, in Siri that is representing your user interface in a different way, more than text, then you'll be dealing with it in here. And the handler then, the intent handler, is what does um, all, the, all the real hard work. You need to also do something to enable Siri for your app. So there's a new permission that you'll be familiar with pretty soon, um, which will ask you if it's OK that, um, that your app is going to be, oh, sorry. It's, it's going to ask you if it's, if it's OK that your app, um, the app you're using, is going to be using the microphone. And to do this, you fill in a usage description in your info.p list, and you make a call to request Siri authorization. That'll display the alert to the user. The user says OK, and everything's great. Um, the one thing is that in your, in your settings in, in under Siri, you will have someone could switch off your app again if they're, they're not happy with it. Uh, what have I done? Yeah. So um, yeah, you'll, you do need to do a little bit of handling to make sure that someone hasn't switched off the Siri stuff. Then again, it's probably not essential for your app. So a little bit about intents here. Um, and this is the, the business logic that deals with your Siri, um, Siri requests. You've got an intent handler, and that inherits from I an extension. And this here is just uh, the example intent that I created there a second ago in Xcode, um, or at least I took a screenshot of it. And you've got a number of different What's listed here is a number of different intent handlings. So because it's for messaging uh, in the example, it does send message, search for messages, and set message attribute um, handling. So they're your list, that's your list, of, um, um, your list of handlers, um, the intents and the response that you can have for each, for each thing in messaging. And for all of those um, eight domains that I discussed earlier, they're all listed out um, very neatly in the iOS um, developer documentation. There's, there's also some, some other things. So we've talked there about um, the, how Siri can recognize certain words, and it uses your app as a keyword. There's, you can also create custom vocabula vocabularies for for your application so that it'll recognize other words um, that might be, might be related. The, so that's the code side of things. Um, back in your info.plist, which is you know, a, a properties file that's associated with your, with your extension, you need to also list those extent, intents, intents there. Um, you list your supported intents. That, that way Siri knows what you can do. And you can restrict some of the intents when, it, when you're locked. So when, when, or when the phone is locked, at least. Um, so uh, if you, for example, it's actually very, <laughs> I didn't mean that joke, but it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> um, so you don't want to send a message when your phone is locked, for example. Um, then, you'd, then you'd add that um, into that array. So sorry. Um, right. The, the way everything works in the background is that there is a three-step process of resolve, confirm, and handle. So that's the architecture diagram from Apple, um, which is great. But I'll just show you an example here of what Skype have done for, for doing this resolve, confirm, handle. So you will have said, call Lisa on Skype. And now hits the resolve step. Um, if you only had one Lisa in your Skype contacts, then it, it would skip this step. But because you've got a number of Lisas in your contacts directory, you'll have a function that says, I'm going to resolve the, um, the call intent. And it'll list out all the contacts that match. So you, do, you actually do the search through your contacts directory yourself. Next thing uh, is the confirm step. So, just because you click, it on, click on it there, you don't want the, the call to happen. The, Siri will always ask you to confirm things, and you'll just click on yes then. And then in the handle, you'll just make a call then to go to your, to your main app user interface 
and do your, do your connecting. So that's, that's all there is to it. The, um, the next thing is that in your, in your user interface, I'm not going to go into detail about this because I actually haven't a clue how they did it, but um, here Uber have, in, in Uber's case, they make a call, hey Siri, take me home in an Uber X. Um, Apple knows where home is. Uber doesn't, but Apple does. So that's, that's great and that's dealt with. And it just goes straight to a confirm step here. And they've got a custom interface here using, using maps and they, um, they can then just, you know, make that user interface anything that they want. And this is all from the Siri screen. And the cool thing about all of this, I suppose, and this part especially, is that once you've installed your application and once you've created your account and you've done all the, so, so I download Uber. I create my account, I put in my payments details, and in theory, if I wanted to, if I trusted Siri, if, I, if Siri worked for me, and, and it is much better in iOS 10, I should also say that, um, then I would never need to open up Uber again. And, and that's cool. And if you, that's kind of the common theme that's going through the, um, through the, everything in iOS 10 here and kind of in Android N. The, the operating system is taking over again instead of like it being the, the blast of apps that you have. So you, soon you won't need to open up any apps apart from the native ones. You heard it here first. So um, with Maps, I wanted to do a thing about this. And I, I was up really late last night trying to, trying to find stuff about it. It's, it's a bit mysterious how Maps integration works. But the idea is that if I open the Apple native Maps application, and I'm one of three domains, if I'm a ride booking application, if I'm a restaurant reservations, or if I'm a, what's the third one? Ride booking, restaurants, and uh, something else. I, I really should have remembered. I probably probably listed it here. Oh, it's only two domains. Um, then, for the ride booking example, if I if it picked up my location and if I had set, if I had Uber installed, then all the Ubers that are near me could could show up here, and I could book them from the Maps application, not from Siri. Um, and here in this example, it's for Open Table. And this was in the keynote as well, where they showed that this, this restaurant that is on open table, you could, do a, you could book a table to it, book the table or, or get directions to it. The directions part is from Apple Maps. The book a table is from open table. Apparently, this is done by having your Siri intent and the fact that you have your Siri intent UI handler for one of for a ride booking or a restaurant application means that this will happen, but um, I haven't had a chance to play with it. The documentation is really sparse, but it is a big headline that they had. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm not able to talk more about that. In return, though, we're coming up to the bit that you're going to be millionaires. So first, we'll talk about iMessage apps. Um, so like Facebook earlier on this year. Um, they, they added in chatbots into um, Facebook Messenger. Every other messaging application that's out there has kind of been overtaking um, Apple's, Apple's native iMessage. And this iOS 10 is their attempt to get back in the game. So um, there's two things, there's two parts to it. There's apps, which are more complicated things. And then there's sticker packs, which will make you smile. So first, it, um, this is what the App Store looks like. Or yeah, it is actually what the App Store looks like. So you see, um, in iMessage, you're going to be able to, so you've got your App Store on your phone. That's, that's separate. If you open up iMessage, there'll be a little icon that you can click on to go to the iMessage App Store. And in there, you'll see all of these, all of these options. Um, here's Open Table again. Um, there's apps for sharing gifts, apps for um, sharing budgets, and there's loads of sticker apps as well. So there's, there's two, two kinds of things that you can do here. You can create a standalone app. You could decide, I'm going to create a ma an app for within iMessage, and it's not going to do anything else. It's not going to be a, it's not going to be a normal app on, on my phone. 
So if you're doing that, you're creating a new iMessage application. Alternatively, you could be extending an existing app, which makes more sense. Um, and in this case, you just create a new, so you go full new target, iMessage extension, and then you've got a message extension here. Um, it has a view controller and a storyboard as well, so that you can, um, you can create your custom user interface. Again, you should use embedded frameworks um, so that you, you don't have a mess of code. The embedded framework would be, would be along here, and both the application and the extension will be using it. So you can create a custom interface. That's just the default one says, hello world. Um, not much to say about that. And the MS Mas Messages app view controller inherits from the UI view controller. You can do all these things like tracking your messages with did receive, did start sending, did cancel sending. There's a pile of, um, a pile of different methods in there. There's also, so you've got the MS Message class and that, that allows you to create interactive messages that will contain your app data. So your app data here in this case could be um, sharing a reservation or making a payment. It would go, you put that inside the message. Then you can also, so the, the conversation um, then is just the, the entire conversation. Well, obvious enough, it's good, excellent um, object naming from Apple there. So, um, here's, a, here's an example, will it play? I think it will play. And this is battleships. So what happens here is that one person sets up the game, says where their ships are, they send it to the other person, the other person guesses where the ships are, um, interacting with the message, and then it'll display the result of the game. So um, this is that happening. So placing the ships, sending the message, and then this person clicks on the message, tries to guess where the ships are, um, they find them, and that's it. It sends the message back to John. So it's, it's pretty cool. Like, these are things that we were, we've seen in the past in um, Yahoo Messenger, like on the desktop, and you know, there's chess games and all of these that you'll see on the App Store later on. So, so that's the apps. Um, are they? Are they good? I don't, I don't know. I thought chatbots were the next best thing, next great thing. But even the, even the guy, um, the guy from Facebook, Marcus something, um, he was just saying that the chatbot, um, the number of chatbots there is a mess at the moment and none of them do anything worthwhile. Oh, you have to watch that again. So stickers, right. Here's a zero code thing. Um, I, I actually, when, when they mentioned this in the, in the keynote, everyone was getting excited. It was one of the hoopering ho and hollering um, parts of the, of the Apple event. And usually I'm, I'm there um, shouting with them, but well, from home, I'm not, never at the event. Um, but in this case, I was like, oh, what the hell? But um, the idea anyway is, you probably know, um, the idea is that you're just able to send messages instead of or send, sorry, send stickers instead of emojis. Um, and, and these sticker packs, um, for example, the Nintendo announced this morning that they were going to have a Mario sticker pack. And yeah, actually, I almost forgot that. I should have had that as my first thing. In iOS 10, at the, at the event, they announced there was going to be Mario on iOS, which is, is fantastic for people of my vintage. Um, a game I understand. I understand. Um, but the, the sticker pack that they've released here, it's got, it's, I don't have a GIF of it, but from reading about it, because I, I, I don't have iOS 10 on here at the moment, um, it's, it's done really well. You see Mario there, he's sitting neatly on top of uh, a message that's, that's pretty well done. And um, you know, he, there's lots of motion, he'd be waving and he'd be going up and down the, the pipes. This is classic Mario. So how to create one of these sticker packs? Um, you go, you create a new sticker pack application, and then you, you open up your XC stickers um, file. And then there, you just put in your app icon for, for what you want. So I created a demo one um, here for, for Cork Dev. So that's the first thing that you do. Um, that, that just makes it recognizable in the App Store. I should have done it for all the rest, but I'm, I'm really lazy. Anyone who knows me will know that's about as much work as I'll ever do. Um, 
So then you go and you drag in your stickers onto, um, onto the section for the sticker pack. So I just got, um, I just got three, three um, images that um, just from um, one of those like laptop sticker stores um, downloaded the images. Sorry about the copyright, but um, I just thought they were relevant. So here's, here's, what, here's how it would work. And um, this icon here, that's the, that's the app store. Um, and all, it'll also show the apps that, the messaging apps and stickers that you've got installed at the moment. So pretend we got this message. What is today's talk about? And in here, you click on the app store thing, get away from Giphy, click on Cork Dev, and drag the sticker up, and you can put in, put in a message. And that's it. Um, I, you could actually have dragged the, the sticker on top of that message, and then it would show up for that user. Um, I've got this looping, so that's going to be annoying. Um, so why would you do any of this? I was like, I, I read this headline. It's from April this year. Um, apparently, Line, this um, probably the, it could be the number one messaging app in Asia, or it's, it's high up there at least, because um, there's, there's a load of um, chat applications there. But they sold $268 million worth of stickers last year. Um, so it's just, it defies belief how or why people would pay for these when we've got perfect emoji <coughs> sets. But it's, it seems there's a market there. But honestly, you need, you need zero code experience to do this. It's pretty easy to deploy those, those apps. So um, I'm, I'm not even going to ask for a cut of it, because Apple are going to take their 30%. So. Um, but it's, it's pretty good. Um, it's, it could be an easy way of, of making money. On to the last few, um, on, on to the last few parts here. There is a new animations framework where, um, or a new, sorry, a new part to the animations framework, which is UI property view animator. And the idea is that you can create a block containing code that, that modifies the property of, of one or, or many views here. And you can set your timing, your duration, your, the, the curve of the animation and then set it off. So, um, I mean, this doesn't look like much. It's just, just an example, but it's just, that little bit of code that we looked at there is what's, what's doing that. Um, it would have been a little bit more complicated in previous iterations uh, of, of iOS. Of course, don't forget, you can't just be implementing this in your apps if you want to support iOS 9 as well. Um, just put a dampener on it. User, user notifications had a big change as well. Um, previously, you could have your push notification, as always, and you could have your local notification. But there, how the local notifications get triggered has changed. You can now have triggers that are based on location, on time intervals, and on the calendar. And the good thing about this is that your app needs to do a little bit less because you create your, your schedule for your, no, for your local notification. This isn't coming from the server. You submit it, like, yeah, you, you put it into the Apple notification or the iOS app notification center. So you just register your, your notification and that's it. So even if your app dies in the background, you know, apps only last for about 10 minutes in the background. Um, you don't need to worry about that. Apple will look after reactivating um, your notifications. And the other really nice thing here is that you can have a notification service. And what this means is that instead of just blindly showing a push notification, you can have um, a little bit of code that takes the push notification, does something with it, and then displays it, which is useful for encryption. So if you have an encrypted message coming from the Apple servers, you can um, display it then um, unencrypted to the user. Unencrypted is always better. Um, the speech recognition, I'm, going, I'm actually not going to talk too much about it, but um, the speech recognition is classic Apple because it's, it's, it's full of limitations. Um, this isn't moving, sorry. So there's a few things you need to do, import the speech framework. Um, 
and three more parts there, um, ending up with having an audio engine that deals with the request. So if you're, if, if you're dealing with um, converting a file to text, it isn't too bad. But if you're, ignore that, if you're, um, if you're dealing with your, your speech in real time, then this is from the, the Apple guidelines. They will say, well, the first thing is, speech recognition can place a relatively high burden on battery life and network usage. So that's, that's al already that puts out warning signs, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. Um, utterance audio, speaking, to the, speaking to, through the microphone, a duration is limited to about one minute, <laughs> lovely and vague. Um, which is similar to the limit for keyboard-related dictation. So, so you're limited with how much you can do. It, it sounds great to have the speech recognition, but then you realize the network's involved. So you've got you know, data, data things, uh, there's the battery life, and then the one minute limit. And, and then they can, they've got this kind of open thing that they can limit the number of recognitions on a day, they can throttle your app. That's just how they go. I'm not going to talk about Swift Tree because that would make a whole new talk and I'm not qualified enough. Um, yeah, so like there's a pile of other changes. Xcode is infinitely better. There is a memory debugger, a view debugger. Um, it's, and the, the, uh, yeah, the interface builder is, is pretty good. You can do live previews of different device types from the storyboard view instead of needing to boot up a simulator each time. So that's pretty much it. Um, later on today, you'll all be downloading iOS 10. And um, yeah, there's some, there's some nice features in there. There's, there's a lot more to see, but that's it for me. So. You can, if you were to do that, um, you'd have to do a little bit of coding. So then you'd be creating an iMessage app, but you can go and manipulate the stickers as, uh, as you need to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do the stickers support animations? The stickers, yeah, you can create. Um, I, tr I tried putting in an animated GIF um, yesterday, and it didn't work. Everything kind of broke. But apparently, if you create. Um, if you create your stickers with motion, uh, which I think is Final Cut uh, renamed, um, then you'll be able to, to do the animation. And again, if you do the app stuff, you can, you can go and you can manipulate the, um, the message true code, or, or sorry, the, the sticker true code. And the, um, the iMessage stuff, do you think it would be better to have that as a separate thing because of the whole submission process, or would it be better to be bundled then and have to go through? One. Uh, I, I'd, I'd probably bundle it. I'd, I'd bundle it, and I'd say Apple would probably, They'd probably prefer, you bundle it, prefer it? that it's bundled, yeah. yeah.